Good morning. Today's lesson is elastic and inelastic collisions. Um, so there are two types of collisions that you can have. Um, elastic, inelastic, um, these are sort of extremes. Most collisions in the real world are somewhere between. Um, they're not perfect. There's no such thing in, um, until you get to quantum as a perfectly elastic collision. But there are ones that are close enough that we can consider them perfectly elastic and you don't really notice the difference. So when we talk about an elastic collision, it means not only is momentum conserved, but kinetic energy is conserved as well. No energy is lost during the collision. So a perfectly elastic collision would actually be silent um, because it would have no heat. It would just be all the energy would be transmitted from one ball to the other. Now, obviously that doesn't happen in the real world, but with some things, even like cue balls on a pool table, it's actually close enough that for all intents and purposes it's right. And that not only is the momentum conserved, but the total kinetic energy of the balls before and after are conserved as well. So if an object isn't moving, so if what object isn't moving? So this is the pool ball scenario where you have a ball coming in, hitting a ball that's at rest, and then both balls are moving afterwards, because of that, you can simplify those two equations because now you have two equations with two unknowns, and you can come up with this. For the first ball, so this is the first ball before, this is the first ball after, and it's just the difference in the masses. The velocity of the second ball after, remember the velocity of the second ball before is zero, turns into this based on the velocity of the first ball and the masses. So if you get a situation where one ball is hitting another ball at rest and they're elastic, it's an elastic collision, which I will specifically say in the question, you can use these two equations. So here's an example. If you've got a billiard ball moving at six meters per second, colliding with another ball at rest, a slightly lighter ball at rest in an elastic collision, what's their velocity? Again write out what you know, mass of the first ball, its velocity, mass of the second ball, its velocity, and then to find the first ball's velocity after, it's m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2 times its initial velocity, which works out to 0.67 meters per second west. The velocity of the second ball is 2 times m1 over m1 plus m2 times its initial speed of the first ball. Write it out, you find the velocity of the second ball. So the ball, too, has a velocity of 6.7 meters per second west after the collision. You may say, wait a minute, how come it's going faster than the first ball? Well, it's because the first ball is heavier than the second ball. So the other, so momentum can still, and energy can still be conserved, even if one object is going faster, because the heavier ball is now going much slower. Now here's a cool fact. If you look at those equations, you can actually see that if m1 is less than m2, if the lighter ball is the one going in, there's no way it can have a positive velocity. So if the lighter ball is heavier than, sorry, the first ball is heavier than the ball it's hitting, this will always be negative. So the first ball will always be going backwards. Similarly, if the first ball is heavier, it will always be going forwards after the collision. Now, keep in mind this is only true for an M2 at rest. If the M2 is actually moving, so, for example, if you're doing a question with, you know, football players, the lighter player can make the heavier player go back, but they have to be moving a lot faster. This is just for at rest. What if both are moving? Well, if both are moving, this is, by the way, is the annoying question I would have given you um, if we were in class because you'd have time to solve it. Then it gets more tricky. Because you know these are true, you know this equation from momentum you know this equation from energy. Now they look very similar, unfortunately, because this one's a quadratic and this one isn't. Solving for two equations with two unknowns with these is incredibly long. It takes about a page and a half of math. So we're not going to bother with it. Um, it's literally just a math problem. All right, inelastic collisions we can do. So a totally inelastic, in, in, in normal collisions, momentum is conserved, but energy isn't. Now, momentum is always conserved in every collision. That's a law. Energy, not always. Only inelastic. 
However, there is something called a totally inelastic collision, where the two ob you may have seen already where the two objects stick together after the collision and basically become one object. And because they're one object, they have a common final velocity and they have a combined mass. So this equation can simplify. You can do the common factor ahead of time and write it as this right off the bat, that the first object times its velocity plus the second mass of the object times its velocity is their combined mass times the new velocity that they both have together. So you can simplify to that. That's what we refer to as totally inelastic. So an example of that would be, let's say you have a 1500 kilogram car moving east at 40, and it's rear-ended by a slightly heavier van traveling at 60. And if the bumpers lock together, what's their combined velocity? Well, we write out what we know. Don't forget the directions. They're both in the same direction this time. Write out our equation, plug in the numbers, and you find their combined velocity is actually 14.3 meters per second. So slightly slower than this box, but slightly faster than the first car was moving. Now, there's a really interesting video um, that deals with this. Um, it's on Physics Girl. It's her newest video. It's actually building an air cannon um, that uses ping pong balls to basically accelerate them to 400 kilometers an hour and destroy things. It's actually really cool and she does quite a bit with elastic and inelastic collisions and ties it into car crashes. Um, it's really worth watching. So it's Physics Girl, her newest video. Um, really, really interesting. All right. See you next time.